Welcome to Lakeside Community Lutheran Church on this second Sunday of Easter in which we hear Jesus appears then to his disciples and shows them his hands and particularly Thomas. The theme of the service for today will be the hands of Jesus then and that will be the message for this morning and also the songs for today have to do with hands as well. So welcome to our hands of the risen Christ service for today. Next to Sunday I hope that you'll give a Another warm welcome to Reverend Mary Albig, who will be supply preaching. And uh, she came and uh, preached in January, and uh, I hope you give her a warm welcome next week as well. We have uh, some announcements here this morning, so we'll, uh, we'll start then with the announcements. And the first one is with the Bible study. Good morning. Today I'm here to tell you about our new Bible study, Spiritual Warfare, Overcoming the Enemy. Uh, Now today, there are no funny stories or silly jokes that I'm going to tell you, because this study is serious. Some years ago, when uh, Roger Pittman was our pastor. He spoke on this very subject, and he stood up in front, and he pointed a finger at us, and he said, there's a bullseye on your back. Scared the bejeepers out of me. And now I'm talking to you about the same subject. As Christians, following in Christ's footsteps and adhering to his commands, we are targets. We are the last stronghold against the evil one in his quest for power and control over everyone. He, um, he's targeting us because he's got all the other unbelievers already. And he's very subtle in the way he does it. <coughs> he's using social media, TV, movies, even the news to influence us and our minds to his way of thinking. But we have the tools to fight back. God's word, his promises, and his son, all wrapped up in the Bible. Today, I offer you these tools, spelled out in the new study, which begins on Wednesday, this Wednesday, April 19th at 9.30, in the library. Everyone is invited. Bring a friend. This might be your spiritual life, depending on it. And I leave you with this very thought. Evil can never be good. A lie can never be true. And wrong is never right, contrary to popular opinion. Thank you. The, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the May Shepherding Group will be meeting next uh, Sunday after church in the library. And please, uh, they're shorthanded, like a lot of the months are. So if you're able to uh, give an extra hand, that would be greatly appreciated. Also this week, uh, Wednesday and Thursday, there's uh, food distribution in Webster. And uh, if you're, you're able, 
both days are at 8 o'clock in the morning, 8 o'clock on Wednesday to help unload the semis, and on Thursday then the food distribution. And uh, again, uh, we do between 16 and 1,800 people a month, so it's a, quite, a, quite a mission. So thank you. Now we're called to worship. Our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, Forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. A gathering song, put your hand in the hand. Sellers, no different fellows than what you and I profess to be. be. And it causes me shame to run me. Your hand in the hand of the man who still the water. Put your hand in the hand of the man who calmed the sea. 
can look at yourself and you can look at others differently. Put your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. And the Lord taught me how to pray before I reach the seven. When I'm down on my knees, hey, hey, I'm close to heaven. And he lived with his life with two kids do. But he showed me enough of what it takes to see you through. There's a hand in the hand of the man, still the water. Put your hand in the hand of the man on the sea. Look at yourself and you can look at others differently. Put your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Prayer of the Day. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we, who have not seen, have faith in you, 
and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. You're invited to share a greeting of peace. The first reading this morning is from Acts chapter 2, verse 14 through 14a and 22 to 32. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man, handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. 
For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God, God had sworn, him with, sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. The word of the Lord. The psalm this morning is Psalm 16, and let's read it responsively. Protect me, O Lord, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all the other. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. O oh Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls, the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. 
When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called a twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed me because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear followers of the crucified and risen Christ, grace be unto you and peace from God our Creator and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. The cans of an infant are something to behold, so tiny and yet so precise, small replica of what they will become as an adult. To begin with, it seems as if those hands just kind of flail around and grab onto what they can. But sooner or later, they learn dexterity and skills and are able to use those as they come to know. They put their hand in the hand of another, the palm of an adult. Soon there is a chronology in life where the hand of a parent lets go of the hand of a child in boarding the school bus to go to school. The hands then are used for various functions, various learning, and all the way through. Later in life, perhaps, that one may take the hand of another and speak the words of, I do. Those hands go to the end of life in which hands define them. Hands tell a story. Well, today, hands tell a story in our gospel text for today. And as we hear this gospel text for today, it's a very prominent text on the second Sunday of Easter Every year, this is the designated gospel text, and for good reason, there's so much here. And uh, the hands of the risen Christ are simply one of the subplots in the story here. So we have here the story then of Jesus appears to the disciples when it was the uh, evening on the first day of the week. The doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. Well, it's understandable that they're afraid of the Jews. Actually, Jesus then has been put to death then by the Jews and the Roman authorities. And who knows, they may be next. And so we have here the locked doors where they are. Jesus came among them and stood and said, Peace be with you. Now, someone has, uh, has commented that uh, actually when they, uh, Jesus comes and stands among them, it may not have actually been their best day. What if he really does come back? After all, only one of the disciples, John, is there at the cross. One of the main disciples denies his Lord. Still another one betrays his Lord. This has not been their finest hour. And could it be then that these disciples then are afraid then that Jesus might actually come back? And who knows, they may have lined up leaven deep against the door to prevent anyone from coming in. But amazingly, it is to these very disciples that Jesus comes and says, what? Peace be with you. He could have very well said, well, some lot of fine friends you are, let me down, scatter, deny me, betray me. But instead, he restores the relationship with saying, peace be with you. Peace be with you has come down in the life of the church as well and becomes a part of our ritual as well in the sharing of the peace. Now, three years ago at this time, with the beginning of the lockdown and lockouts then, people were very much concerned then about 
exchanging the peace with a shaking of hands. And so we praise God here today then in the uh, various ways of sharing the peace with hands and with other gestures as well. Peace be with you. And then after he had said this, he showed them his hands in his side. So we find all the way through here, then Jesus shows them his hands in his side. So these are the hands then that uh, have been crucified, the mark of the nail in his hands here. And uh, Jesus throughout his life then would have used his hands in many ways, uh, working in his carpenter shop then, these would have been uh, calloused hands then. And then through his ministry as well, they've been healing hands, putting his hands on those and healing them, taking children in his lap then and putting his hands on them. And so in many and various ways, then we have the hands of Jesus here that come in the form of the crucified and risen Christ. We also have here, when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. It's almost as if for the Gospel of John then, this is his this actual Pentecost as well, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. We oftentimes call this today the office of the keys, being able to grant the forgiveness of sin. And then there's that fascinating story then with Thomas. Now when you think of Thomas, what do you think of? Oftentimes there's an adjective that goes before it, doubting Thomas. And so it's come down to us today as doubting Thomas. And uh, But today he's uh, gained more uh, understanding then because there are many people who have questions about the Christian faith. And so they can identify with this Thomas. And actually Thomas uh, later on would go to India then and preach the gospel there. I know in one congregation I was serving, I was meeting with some... uh, uh, parents and they were getting ready to have their child baptized and uh, the father then uh, came from the country of India and uh, he named their son Thomas and he said actually in India then uh, Thomas is a very common name then after the disciple Thomas who went to India and shared the gospel there. Thomas who was one of the twelve was not there when Jesus came so the other disciples said we have seen the Lord But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails, my hand in his side, I will not believe. So that's how we get doubting Thomas then. Uh, Maybe maybe today we could say he came from Missouri, the show me state. You got to show me before I'll believe it. Well, a week later then the disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them, although the doors were shut. So they have the doors shut even a week later. And Jesus came and stood among them again and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your hand here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Well, today then we have the hands of the risen Christ. These hands come to you here today and reach out to you and extend the peace of our Lord. Well, there are many different kinds of hands uh, during that Holy Week then, even as this is the uh, evening of Easter day. There are the hands then that uh, wave the palms, and Hosanna highest in the hands. They were kind of the folded hands of the bystanders who didn't know what, quite what to make all of this. There were the clenched fists then at the Golgotha who railed against this one Jesus, and the hands then of Pilate who says, I wash my hands because I am innocent of this blood. Hands tell a story. Well, hands tell a story in our day today as well. Uh, It is said of Helen Keller then, who overcame uh, her disabilities as far as sight and hearing goes, and she wrote it this way. Hands tell a story. Some hands are like ice, and they are frigid and revealing a personality to that extent. Other cans are highly charged, warm even as the sun. Helen Keller then, by the use of hands then, could tell much about a person's soul. The story then is told of uh, Vladimir Horowitz, who is the pianist who uh, played at Carnegie Hall in 1965, and he was into his uh, piece on Chopin, and uh, the lights went out. It was the great blackout then of 1965. He continued playing for a couple of minutes and then uh, stopped as a stagehand came over and told him 
that there was no light to be had and uh, none was to come anytime soon. He played the entire rest of the concert then in complete and total darkness. His hands then had learned to play the keys and so even in the darkness of a blackout, he could play as well. Well, uh, a man by the name of Dennis Smith tells a story in uh, Fire Engine Company number 65. He says that he and his wife uh, have a certain metaphor that they use and they reach out their cans and they simply say, how much? And so someone starts the game or the metaphor and the other knows. And how much do you love me is the metaphor then. And then they would say, well, in money, Wall Street. In, uh, in sports, the New York Yankees. And they would go on and on like that. And at the very end then, they would put their hands around each other and embrace. Hands tell a story. Well, how many of you remember Johnny Cash? Oh, I'm Johnny Cash. No, I'm not Johnny Cash. But Johnny Cash is the man in black, and uh, he, he tells in his memoirs then that uh, he admits then that he uh, m abused and misused drugs and alcohol during his life, and every once in a while he'd uh, end up in the local clink. And uh, so, uh, he's probably his most famous scene then is singing Folsom Prison Blues at the uh, prison there. And uh, one, uh, one time, wouldn't you know, he ended up in the same jail cell as an inebriated lumberjack. Now this lumberjack was very large, I'm talking Paul Bunyan type large, but in his inebriation, uh, he, he threatened Johnny. And he said to Johnny, believe it or not, I can break your neck. Johnny thought to himself, what am I going to do? And so he started to sing some of his songs, I Walk the Line and Folsom Prison Blue, and the lumberjack said, well, you certainly sound like Johnny Cash to me. And he said, well, yes, sir, I am Johnny Cash. And then he said, well, prove it. And so Johnny Cash, as the story goes, uh, sang the song here when he reached down his hand to me. Now, I, uh, I uh, was watching this YouTube this morning and throughout the week, and uh, I don't have it note for note. I mean, who can sing like Johnny Cash, right? And uh, so if it sounds like I'm improvising, you're right. When it, once my soul went astray from the given only way, I was wretched and vile as could be. But my savior to love gave me peace from above when he reached down his hand for me. When the savior reached down his hand for me, when he reached down his hand for me, I was lost and undone without God or his son when he reached down his hand for me. I was near to despair when he came to me there and he showed me that I could be free. Then he lifted my feet, gave me gladness complete when he reached down his hand for me. In the last verse, how my heart doth rejoice when I hear his sweet voice and the tempest to him I can flee there to lean on his arms safe, secure from all harm since he reached down his hand to me. Now, if you want to hear the real thing, you can go home and turn on to YouTube and hear Johnny Cash sing when he reached down his hand for me. And uh, I kind of like Johnny Cash because he, only, he has about a four note range there. So he's kind of he's my kind of guy there. You know, he can just, it's kind of right in there like kind of Bob Dylan. But when he reached down his hand for me and what he tells in his book then is that when he sang that song, it, it uh, changed the whole temperament of the cell in that day, and he said they became long time, long friends. Well, Jesus has reached down his hands to you, and these hands on the cross that says, uh, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Today you'll be with me in paradise. I thirst, uh, it's finished. And other words as well, reaches out his hands to you as well. And he speaks these words, peace be with you. Shalom kavarim, shalom kavarim, shalom, shalom, shalom kavarim, shalom kavarim, shalom, shalom. Peace to you, my good friends, 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 peace to you, my good friends. Peace to you, my good friends.
The hands of the risen Christ reach out to you today. Thanks be to God. Amen. For our hymn of the day, then, we'll sing that uh, very familiar blues gospel song, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the lasting. Amen. And our prayer song. In this season of resurrection, we lift up to God all those in need in the church and throughout the world. Alleluia, we thank you for your church and its mission. Give us courage to take the good news into the world that does not know you. Grant to us here at Lakeside Community Lutheran Church the courage to take what has been given to us in the mission fields beyond our doors. Alleluia, we thank you for your creation. Challenge us to use its resources wisely, generously, and respectfully. Hallelujah. We thank you for leaders throughout the world. Equip them to do justice and love mercy. Hallelujah. We thank you for all the good things you have given. Transform our thanks into compassion for those who are poor in body, mind, or spirit. We bring before you today those for whom prayers are requested. Marilyn, Anne, John, Tom, Faith, Mark, Barb, Dorothy, Michael. Those fighting addictions, people in crisis, deployed military and families, leaders, children, and peace in the Ukraine. 
In addition, we bring before you today John LeMay, recently hospitalized. Also, Tom Skiba and family, as requested by Bonnie, as well as all others whom we name in our carts at this time. Hallelujah, we thank you for this gathered worship assembly. We thank you for the musical ministry of the companies and choir and of the gathered assembly here today to make a joyful noise. Pray that you will be with Reverend Mary Albing as she leads the service and delivers the message next Sunday. Hallelujah, we give thanks for the wider church, way in which we partner together to do the work we cannot do alone. We pray for our upcoming Synod Assembly ask that you'll be with Joe and Sandy as they represent this congregation. Hallelujah, we thank you for the resurrection. We have been promised through Jesus' death and resurrection and bring us together one day with all the saints, especially Sigrid Erickson and all others who have gone before us, that we may join them one day in that great heavenly banquet. In the meantime, O oh God, we give you thanks for your presence in the forms of bread and wine here today and strengthen us for your service. All this we pray in your name. Amen. God of glory, receive these gifts and the offering of our lives. As Jesus was lifted up from the earth, draw us to your heart in the midst of this world, that all creation may be brought from bondage to freedom, from darkness to light, and from death to life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Reverend Defer, Amen. Come to the meal, for all is now ready.
You've united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth the power of your spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In our sunny song, he's got the whole world in his hands. <laughs> 